Hello and welcome to a cloud developer channel. In today's video, I want to show you a tool that Microsoft announced earlier at a Microsoft Ignite session called Project Honolulu. And it's a, a new server management interface uh, that they've been putting together to, to help uh, IT administrators be able to manage their servers. Now, this, uh, the details of this application is actually listed out or spelled out in the Windows Server blog that you can read. And basically, they introduce you to the application, uh, they show you the interface, and uh, later on in September, they're actually going to be releasing the, uh, the actual bits uh, for the rest of the community to be able to actually start playing around with. Um, this interface is a web-based UI that allows you to actually uh, manage the servers uh, remotely so you don't have to actually RDP into the machines to be able to perform basic operations like installing uh, features and roles, being able to see some uh, settings on the server as well as modify some of the settings. So I actually have it deployed in my lab and I want to show you some of the features and functionality of what the tool allows you to do just to give you a sneak preview of that. So I have the actual interface uh, already up and running and uh, all it was is basically I'm hosting it on the Windows Server Core uh, instance uh, VM on my machine and it's actually running on very uh, minimal specs right now. It's uh, two gigabytes uh, of RAM and I think it's like 40 gigs uh, of hard drive space. So in my case, you know, I don't need a lot of storage. Um, and this is working just fine. So when you get to the interface, uh, a couple of things of note. So you are able to actually manage the servers individually by going to the server manager. You're also able to uh, manage the failover cluster um, if you have failover clusters from Windows. And then they're also introducing a new feature uh, to it, which is called hyperconverged cluster manager. So basically, this is for your hyper-converged scenarios where you might have uh, storage spaces direct uh, infrastructure. So basically, you know, you're know you running the uh, hyper-converged infrastructure for hosting your VMs on the um, software-defined storage and, and networking components. So what I'll start off with is showing you just a server manager portion, and then I'll, I'll show you how to set up a cluster real quick. Um, and what you'll be able to actually see in the failover cluster. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and add a couple of machines that I have uh, in my environment. So uh, the first machine is going to be one of my Hyper-V hosts. So you basically give it a name and then uh, you hit connect um, and it will add it or submit in this case. And then I have two nodes uh, that I just called uh, test node one and then there's going to be test node two. So let me add those real quick. And then uh, once you actually uh, set them up, and you can also um, go ahead and import uh, more than one server. So you can point it to a text file that is uh, comma separated or uh, on new line. But um, in this case, I only have a couple of servers to add, so it wasn't a big deal to add it individually. So then what you can do is you either set up uh, the Kerberos authentication appropriately or um, you are able to actually specify a particular account to use. So in this particular case, the account I'm logged in into my machine here um, doesn't have the permissions to uh, initiate the WinRM session. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click Manage As, and I'm going to go ahead and specify use a specific account. So um, I'll use my administrator account, and I'll just say use the credentials for all connections. So as soon as I do that, it connects uh, and we're ready to go. So uh, let me show you real quick uh, some of the capabilities of this. So I'll just click on this node one. And one of the things that I know, um, this is a test VM that I just set up for this purpose. Um, I don't have remote desktop uh, settings set up on it in case I want a remote. So I can just click settings, click remote desktop, allow connections, hit save. And basically that's it. Um, it enables that setting. Um, and then let me go back to test node two and do the same thing, just in case I need to be able to remote into it later. Okay, so um, the next thing I actually wanna show you is um, these two nodes I've set up specifically so I can uh, show you the failover clustering capability. 
But in order to do that, I actually need to install a role uh, for failover clustering. So I'll just go to the roles and features, and you can see that you have uh, the roles and features listed out here. So you can go ahead and uh, select a specific uh, feature in this particular case uh, that I want to install. And uh, when you check it, you can check more than one. And then you just hit install. It will uh, detect if there's any dependencies. And then you can choose if you want to reboot automatically or not. And then just click yes. And off it goes installing. So I'll go to the second node and I'll do the same thing there as well. Okay. And um, you also see this uh, progress bar um, icon um, that you can actually monitor the progress of everything being installed. So in this particular case, uh, test node one is almost done and uh, test node two is going to complete as well. So one finished and the other one is about to complete. So while that's happening, um, I'll show you a couple other things. So if you notice, uh, you actually see information about the CPU in real time or more or less real time. Um, you see the memory utilization, you see um, network traffic as well as IOPS. Now, one of the things that uh, you get by default is this uh, disk metrics are actually disabled because they actually um, have a performance impact on the behavior of your system. So uh, by default, it's actually disabled. Um, I've enabled it just so I can actually see what the different metrics are on that uh, machine. So just to see uh, what it's doing. Um, you can also shut down or restart the machine right from here. Um, if you go into settings, you can see the environment variables for system for the user. So you can go ahead and adjust them here. You can also browse uh, the certificate stores um, and you know, just basically be able to actually perform different operations that you would normally be able to perform through the MMT console. Um, you can also see the different events. Um, so in this particular case, there's no events for this one. And then um, you can also go to devices and be able to see the device manager level information and the details behind it. So you can uh, go on the bottom and actually see all the details. Um, you can also see the CPU based information or uh, computer based information in this case. You see the different display adapters. In this case, I'm running on Hyper-V, so you can see it, it's the VM information so it shows up in here. And um, other things that you would normally see in a device manager. Then you can also take a look at the different events um, that are available through Event Viewer. Uh, you don't actually have to log in or bring up uh, the instance of Event Viewer. Uh, this will actually show you the information here. And you can actually export it from here. You can also uh, actually filter the information just like you can in Event Viewer, which I think is really helpful um, as it allows you to quickly see the, the details you might need without having to go to that server directly. Um, in fact, I'm finding that this is actually working very quickly uh, compared to when you have to start up the Event Viewer on the machine itself. So I think this is uh, pretty handy here. Um, then uh, you're also able to see the different files, so you can actually see the file system. Um, and if you have multiple disks, you'll actually be able to see each one. And then you can start going through the uh, different folders uh, to perform different operations. You can also upload as well as create new folder structures and uh, do a few other things, like being able to extract uh, files as well as uh, take a look at properties. And you can also search for files as well. Um, you can also modify the firewall settings, just like you could if you go directly um, to the actual machine itself. You can take a look at the different rules, enable, disable them, to basically manage the server remotely. You can then also manage the different users um, and uh, also groups on that machine. So we can click on a group, uh, we can click add and then specify the information about the user we want to add to that group. Then you can also take a look at the networking settings. 
and uh, specifically you can see the network adapters and you can also change the, the network adapter settings so this is also very helpful um, so you don't have to either run a bunch of PowerShell commands to try to do it remotely if you're just managing you know one or two servers this actually might be uh, easier to do than having to log in through PowerShell but it all depends on what you're actually used to uh, doing here so um, you can also take a look at the different remote processes that are running on that machine um, and click to get more details behind each one of them and then you can uh, create a process dump you can end the process you can also see that you can actually get more details about a particular process just like you can in test manager and um, also you can do registry editing uh, from here as well so if you uh, open up this uh, say local machine um, if we want to go and change some uh, settings for um, .NET Framework, uh, you can go ahead and uh, open this up and then click Modify, uh, update your settings and then just uh, you know, persist them to the registry remotely. And then uh, we've already seen the roles and features. You can see the different services that are running and you can control services here as well and start them up, change uh, whether you want them to be startup mode manual or not. You can take a look at storage. Now in this particular case, um, you would have to make sure that you have um, the appropriate um, services installed if you want to be able to uh, manage volumes and shares. So in this case, um, I'm able to actually uh, take a look at the different volumes that exist, um, change the drive letter, and resize it if I need to. And then on the disk, I can create another vol volume or create uh, or attach uh, a VHD file itself as well. So it's a lot of very useful uh, functionality that is available to you. And then other features that um, you need to make sure you actually have roles installed for, otherwise you will actually see some errors um, or you know lack of functionality for, is uh, if you wanna do like storage replicas, so you don't have the specific namespace configured, basically there is no uh, feature or role installed, so you can't manage that. As well as if you go to virtual machines, you actually see that there is no Hyper-V role installed, so you can't actually do anything there as well. And then uh, if I go to Windows Update, uh, you'll actually be able to see uh, what updates are available to you uh, and the update history as well. So, and you can actually trigger the update process right from here, as well as manage the different settings uh, for how do you want to receive updates. So uh, that's basically a quick run through. So let's go back real quick. Um, and set up uh, the failover cluster. So I already um, installed the failover role, and then all I need to do now is actually create a cluster. Um, typically, what you would want to do, um, actually, I need to start it up as a different user. So, one second. So typically you would want to actually um, do the validation of that cluster. So when we hit next, uh, but in this case, uh, I've, I'm just doing a, a quick demo. So um, I, I don't need uh, to do any, I don't want to do actually any validation on this. So I'll give it a name, test cluster one. I'll give it an IP address. I'll hit next and this uh, will go ahead and actually confirm and um, go ahead and actually start setting up the cluster um, within my uh, environment. So let's give it a moment and uh, we'll be able to actually start registering it within the uh, connection uh, settings of uh, the server management interface. Okay, so it actually completed and uh, we can see that the cluster um, is fully set up and uh, now all we have to do is just switch over to the failover cluster connections and click add and then we'll give it the name and you can see that I actually found it 
and it asks you if you actually want to add the servers uh, uh, from the cluster as well. So I'll go ahead and check it. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, the servers are already in the server manager, so there's uh, no need uh, to re-import it again, but uh, it doesn't hurt. So um, here now I can actually click on the actual cluster name, and then we can see the overview. So in here we'll see the actual cluster IP information. Uh, we can simulate a failure, we can start it, uh, we can stop it, we can remove the cluster. We can see the disk information. Now, in this particular case, uh, these are just two uh, test node servers, so I don't actually have any disks uh, that are available to the cluster itself. But I can see the actual cluster network and the two interfaces that are on each node and their rel uh, relevant IP addresses as well. And then I can take a look at the different nodes that are in that cluster, and then I can manage it, I can pause the, the nodes, I can stop the service. And then um, this is one feature that uh, I haven't uh, played enough with yet, but uh, you can actually create a role. In this particular case, it creates a generic role, and uh, I want to actually play around with being able to uh, manage roles. So, for example, being able to add a file uh, server role and see what it actually shows you in this interface. But they haven't had a chance to do that yet. And then uh, under virtual machines, uh, there's nothing here, um, and then there's nothing in the virtual switches either. So it will actually give you errors uh, periodically. Um, you know, now keep in mind that uh, this is still uh, being developed. Um, so there's features and enhancements that are coming out uh, very frequently, actually. So and hopefully soon they'll be available to the wider community. But in this particular case, it couldn't actually find a commandlet. That's because uh, PowerShell um, is not installed for uh, for this particular role, so uh, it can't actually get any information for it. So um, this is just a, a basic run through of all the different uh, features or some of the features that are available, and uh, I'm sure more of them are going to be actually coming out shortly. So uh, look out for more announcements um, from Microsoft uh, server management team where they'll be uh, showing you uh, or I guess it's, you know actually providing more updates on the new functionality that's going to be available. So I found this to actually be very uh, helpful tool to be able to manage uh, small environments. I'm actually curious how it actually end up scaling to larger enterprise environments to see if this makes it easier for IT administrators to be able to manage servers. Um, you know, because you don't have to actually log in individually to all the servers. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this content. If you have any comments uh, or questions, go ahead, uh, go ahead and leave the feedback in the comment section below, and I will talk to you next time.